Hi guys and girls of course. Welcome to the third video of this Go tutorial series. If you are completely new to pointers or you are completely confused about pointers, then this is the video for you. A lot of people find pointers to be one of the more challenging topics in programming, uh, but I don't think it has to be. I think a lot of that is due to the way that it's taught. So my goal is that by the end of this video, you know exactly what pointers are and you know exactly how to use them because I don't think it has to be nearly as challenging as people find them to be. So let's get started. Let's first define what a pointer actually is. A pointer holds the memory address of another variable. So that's exactly what it is. It's the memory address. And when it comes to pointers in Go, there are two symbols that you have to consider when thinking about pointers. They both start with A. They are the ampersand and the asterisk. Let's talk about the ampersand first. The ampersand basically has one meaning when we're talking about pointers. And you can imagine that it translates literally into the address of. And it's the address of the variable that it precedes. For example, if I was to say A is equal to 25, and we set B equal to the memory address of A, the value of B is just that. It is the memory, the address where the variable A is stored. And its type is a pointer to an int. And we write that as asterisk followed by the type. The asterisk actually has two meanings. You will either see it next to a variable or you will see it next to a type. When it's next to the variable, we're saying that we want to get the value that this variable or this pointer is pointing to. And that's called dereferencing a pointer. We're getting the value that it's pointing to. For example, above we said that B is equal to the memory address of A. If we were to set n equal to asterisk b, we are dereferencing b. We're saying get the value of a and set that equal to n. So n is equal to 25. The second case, as I said, is you'll see it next to a type. And when we see it that way, we're saying we're basically declaring a variable that is a pointer to that type. So just like we did above, we said asterisk int. We're, B is basically a pointer to an integer type. So that, that is the type of B, asterisk int. And I'll give another example. Uh, I could say var pointer to string my name. And basically we're saying that my name holds the memory address of a string variable. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, I'm gonna give you, definitely give you more examples. Now I'll give you not only example in code, but I'm a big fan of the visual illustrations. In fact, I think they're highly underrated when it comes to programming. Uh, and I, I love to like dabble a little bit in VR and AR. So I kind of put this little program together just to give an illustration. What we see here is a program that allows us to create a variable. We can put in the type, we can put in the name, we can put in the value, and then it'll get stored in a memory address. And you can see that these boxes on the left here actually have addresses. So for example, let's say I want to create a variable uh, called my name of type string, and I'll set that equal to, to Gerald and create that. And then it gets stored in a memory address. Pretty simple. So let's go ahead and reset that. And first I'll type out what I'm going to illustrate. So let's say I want to create a variable A and set it equal to 25. And remember, this is implicit declaration, so the compiler will determine that this is an integer automatically. Now I'll go ahead and do this in the visual program. Okay, so we've got that variable there. Now I'll say B is equal to the memory address of A. So let's create that. And you can see here that the value of B is in fact the memory address of A. And when you're writing a program, there's nothing, there's nothing special about these memory addresses. You can easily print these out and I'll do that right here. And there we can see the memory address of A. Next I'll set, I'll set C 
equal to the memory address of B. Now this one is a little bit tricky when it comes to the type. That's the question for you is what type is C? And I'll give you a hint, it's not a pointer to an integer because B itself is not an integer. B, B is actually a pointer to an integer. So what is C? And I'll show you guys in this visual program, you may have already seen it on the list here. And so we can define C as a pointer to a pointer to an integer. I know that's kind of <laughs> kind of confusing, but that's what it, hopefully this, this visual illustration uh, does provide some clarity for you. And I also could have written it like this. And if I comment out the other line, you can see that the program still runs fine. And of course I had to dereference C there uh, in order to actually print out the value uh, that C is pointing to. So that right there is really pointers. I mean, there's certainly more to it, but if you can understand everything that I just said right there, I promise you, like, understanding pointers will not be an issue for you. For you. Uh, now, there is more to understanding where and why you need to use pointers, uh, so let's go ahead and talk about that. One use case for using variables would be to alter the value that's passed into a function. When we call a function that takes an argument, and by the way, I haven't talked about functions yet, um, but you guys have certainly seen me use them. You've seen me use the main function. You've seen me use the, probably the print line function more than anything else. And what, what, what I've done is basically pass in values or arguments to those functions. We'll talk more about that later. But for now, just know that you can pass in, you know, these values to a function and they, you know, execute some type of code. But when you pass a one of these basic values, which I talked about last week, primitives, into a function, you're actually not passing in the variable. You're only passing in the value. It's actually a copy of the variable. And so the actual variable remains unaffected. And I'll illustrate that uh, with an example here. So let's say I create a function called zero that takes an integer and then it sets that value equal to zero. And then I'll actually create a variable in my main function to illustrate that. So we'll set e x equal to five, we'll pass that into this function zero, and then we'll print out the value of x. And what you can see here is that x is still equal to five. And that's because, like I said, we're only passing in a copy of the value. Once it's passed into the function, you're not, you're not working with the actual variable anymore. And this is important. For example, let's say that uh, you had a program that was some type of price calculator. And, you know, you start out with this initial price, which is stored in a variable. And you want to pass this around your program that, that applies discounts to that price. Maybe it, it takes off a certain amount based off of AIDS. Maybe it takes off a certain amount if they're a member or something like that. You may be thinking that this value is actually being, or I'm sorry, this variable is being manipulated as it's being, you know, passed into your functions, but it's actually not. And you need to know that because you'll get back that value. and It'll be the exact same as when you started. And one way we can get around that is by using pointers. So for example, if I say at the top here, instead of passing in an integer, I want to pass in a pointer to an integer. And then I want to dereference this value for this pointer x. So x at this point is a pointer. That's what this function that it sets, a pointer to an integer. And if I want to change the value, I need to dereference it. I want to say, okay, I want to set the value that this points to, to zero. Okay. And then down here, instead of passing in uh, x to zero, we can pass in the memory address of x because we're, we're accepting a pointer into this function. We're accepting a memory address in this function. And I could have, I probably should have used a different variable other than x within the main function. It didn't have to be x. It could have been anything. But I'll go ahead and print that. And then we can see that it actually has changed. The value has changed to zero. So that's the first case for why you would want to use a pointer, as I said, 
to actually change the variable that's being passed into. Another use case for why you would use a pointer would be to reveal if a value actually has been set or if it's just the default value. For example, let's say that you're working on the back end for some movie streaming service uh, and you're building a service that collects data. And part of that data is whether or not the user is 17 because you need to determine whether or not they have access to rated R content. Uh, let's say that the people designing the front end application, let's say they goofed up. It's not actually sending you any value. So the user, you know, they hit this checkbox in the app that says they're 17 uh, and then it's supposed to send it back, but you don't get anything at all. And let's say I'll start off. Let me go ahead and define this variable here. So variable is 17. That's a boolean. So this is what we would set. And if you watched the video last week, I talked about default value types at the end of the video. And the default value type for a Boolean is false. And the default value type for a number of other structs and types that I actually have not discussed yet, as well as pointers, the default value is nil. And nil means nothing. It has no value at all. So it's false for Boolean, to nil for pointers. If you don't set it to anything, that's what the value would be. So like I said, the front end doesn't send anything. The user clicked it, but you didn't receive that value. That means that it's going to be set to false no matter what. So let me go ahead and, and kind of illustrate how a pointer can rectify that. So let's define a pointer is 17 set equal to a pointer to a Boolean. And let's Let's go ahead and just print out both of these values. And just by printing the value, you can already tell that the pointer hasn't been set yet because it's nil. That's the only way it could get it could be nil if this nothing was ever set to it. But you wouldn't know that looking at the value of just a Boolean. Now let's go ahead and take that a step further and let's create a variable input, which is a Boolean, and we'll set it equal to false. And we'll set is 17 pointer to the memory address of input. That's what it is. It's a pointer to a Boolean. And then we'll put, we'll print out uh, both is 17 pointer and we'll print out the dereference of, of is 17 pointer. If we can see, we can see that we get the memory address and we get the value of false when it's dereference and we don't get any nil values because it's actually been set. And so like I said, if we were just using a standard Boolean, uh, it would either be true or false, but you actually don't know if the value has been set. And I mean, that's pretty much pointers in a nutshell. It doesn't get that much more difficult than that. We'll talk about pointers a little bit more when we talk about uh, receiver types and custom types in a later video, uh, but I encourage you guys to read up on it um, please do. If you guys have any questions or feel that I, I didn't explain, explain something well, uh, put that in the comments. Please do subscribe, like the video. Uh, that does it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.